great, great. Welcome in. This is Fantasy Sports Today here on Sports Grid. I'm Craig Mish along with George Kurtz today on the show. George is filling in for Davis Maddock today. Our fantasy football previews continue. We're just getting started, folks. We got the Detroit Lions on the show today. The focus, of course, of the Hard Knocks television show and a team that seems to be a little bit on the rise, at least from an offensive point of view. George, great to uh, be with you here. We've got a lot to cover on today's show. A rookie hitting a home run for the New York Mets last night as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, certainly a lot of news and notes in the NFL and NBA. Yeah, uh, Brett Beatty for the Mets, right? First at bat, boom, there it goes. Uh, nice drive to, uh, to right. I don't think any other hits in the game here, but that's a nice way to start your career. He is considered the Mets' second best overall prospect next to the catcher, Francisco Alvarez. And uh, it's funny how it worked out, Craig. The Mets did on Sunday, well, we don't think he's ready for the majors. Well, two IL uh, placements later of uh, Guillaume and uh, Escobar, he's ready for the majors. So uh, away it went there. Yeah, and definitely a good performance there. Mets trying to get a tie in the series with the Atlanta Braves as they wrap it up today. Let's get to our top headlines. A couple of big stories in college football today. First of all, college football playoff are trying to explore the restructuring of how college football is governed. We also found out a short time ago, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes ago, the uh, the CBS is going to be taking over the Big Ten in terms of games on TV. So your Saturday afternoon, 3.30 Eastern game, when that moves away from the SEC, they're going exclusively to ESPN, CBS taking that over. Derwin James becomes the highest paid safety in the NFL. Uh, fantasy news, Seahawks rookie Kenneth Walker undergoes hernia surgery, so we'll dive into that here in a second. And LeBron James signs a two-year contract, $97 million with the Lakers, and he'll be in Los Angeles for the next couple of years. But George, Kenneth Walker with the hernia surgery you know, certainly there is some optimism here that he can return early in the season, but naturally uh, with Chris Carson retiring and Rashad Penny coming off the season that he had last year, this is definitely worth an exploration as to how you view the running back situation in Seattle. Yeah, this this one uh, is interesting, right? Uh, now, once again, uh, although you and I prefer to draft as late as possible in our fantasy leagues, I did have a home draft that was last week. And guess which running back I have? Kenneth Walker. Uh, luckily for me, he's not a starter for me. He is a backup, so this is not hurt, doesn't hurt yet. But still, it's concerning. You know, he was, uh, I guess you might say, battling for the starting running back job with Rashad Penny, although I expect, I expect Penny to win it anyway. But a second-round pick, he wasn't going to be on the bench. He was going to play. You don't draft these guys to be on the bench here. And now that I would think this puts him pretty far behind. I know Pete Carroll did have some nice words to say about him. I believe it was last week that he was very good at picking up the blitz, which is so important. As a rookie running back, if you cannot protect your quarterback, you're not going to play. I don't care who the quarterback is. Geno Smith, Russell Wilson, Drew Locke. you got to be able to protect the quarterback here. So it's uh, concerning somewhat. They're hoping he can come back for week one. That sounds extremely optimistic for me. You know, I'm thinking uh, end of September, October. Yeah, and I think at this point, when you look at it and the way that the landscape is changing, a lot is going to be known. And really, I would say, George, for the most part, the final average draft position of a lot of the players that are being taken are definitely going to get figured out at the end of this week for the NFL preseason. Uh, also, George, the Athletic is reporting today that Baker Mayfield has won the Carolina Panthers starting quarterback job. You know, George, I think we pretty much knew this was going to happen. I don't think that we anticipated Sam Darnold winning the gig. But that does give me a little bit more confidence in some of the weapons in Carolina. I would agree with you. Uh, we've been hearing about this for a couple of days that it was going to be Mayfield. When they made the trade, it was going to be Mayfield. All right. They know what they have in Donald. You know, in some ways, Donald got a little screwed uh, out of all this. He was good for the first, what, four plus games last year. And then McCaffrey got hurt and it all fell apart. All right. Yep. I think the same thing could happen with, uh, with Mayfield, right? If McCaffrey stays healthy, this offense can function. It's got some decent players here. But if McCaffrey goes down again, probably not going to matter. Probably not going to matter here. But I, once again, I think Rule knows what he has in uh, Sam Darnold. Now you get the new toy in Mayfield. We'll go with that. Yep, and no doubt there's going to be a lot of interesting conversations surrounding the Carolina Panthers. No fighting, by the way, with New England. We don't want to see any more of that. We saw Bill Belichick walking off the field yesterday with Christian McCaffrey. Naturally, wouldn't that be a nice weapon for Mac Jones and company to have? We'll see what the season looks like, but no doubt 
George and I have a lot to discuss here on the show, but our topics today are surrounding the Detroit Lions. George, we got about a minute to the break. I mean, this is this is the first time that I think a lot of people feel good about the Lions going into a season. It's sort of remarkable. And good for them, right? They've been really a poor for a long time. My best friend is a, is a Lions fan. I can't explain it. He's always lived in New York, but he's a Lions fan. Uh, so, uh, you know, tough times for him. I think this could be, you know, this is what I'll say about the Lions. There's always a sneaky team that is either in that makes it either makes the playoffs or competes for a playoff spot. I think the Lions could be that team. I truly do. Uh, God doesn't need to be great. Just don't be poor. They've got decent uh, wide receivers, especially when Jamison Williams gets healthy here. We know they got a good running back in Swift. You draft Hutchinson. I mean, if everything works out, I think this could be a sneaky team. I don't think they can compete with Green Bay. Don't get me wrong. But that could compete for that seventh wild card spot. Yeah, and we're going to talk about that also a little bit later in the show, so stay on the grid for that. But coming up next, for those of you getting ready to draft your fantasy football teams here in 2022, how many of the Detroit Lions should be on your grid? George and I will come back and we'll take a look at the average draft position of the players that you should be taking in your upcoming fantasy football draft according to the National Fantasy Football Championships, the NFFC. We'll go through it coming up next, so stay on the grid for that as we take a look at Jared Goff and their running backs and then we will take a look at the receivers and tight ends on the team as well as we continue on here on sports grid this is fantasy sports today we'll be right back don't go away Pharrell, coast to coast. I don't care if they play this game in Puerto Rico. I mean, the bottom line is, it doesn't matter Seattle (laughs) or Anaheim, Robbie Ray's stuff has been beautiful all season long. He's gotten stronger. He's led the majors in innings, what, the last two, three years. The guy's an inning eater. He's going to go out and do his job. He's going to go out and get into the seventh inning tonight, and he's going to strike out and go over. He's going to get another nine or ten tonight. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Donnie, in this AP Top 25, what caught your eye? Yeah, if we're looking just at, you know, the old guard, right, which particularly pertains to the S, excuse me, SEC, Alabama number one, Georgia number three, Texas number six. So three teams in the SEC in the top six. Wouldn't shock us again, Kevin, right? Two teams out of the final four will end up being from SEC competition. Notre Dame at number five. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. LSU has the same odds to win the SEC at 100 to 1 as they do to win a national championship, also 100 to 1. Well, I'll say this there are going to be a lot of really bad takes about year one head coaches and a lot of people jumping to conclusions because there are eight, there are eight programs who have played in a national championship in the 21st century who have a first year head coach. That includes Virginia Tech because technically they played in a national championship in the first week. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Definitely a starter in every fantasy football league. He's a top 12 quarterback in fantasy, but no longer the thought process where I guess he could be a number two, the you know, second overall quarterback or the third. Remember in years past, he was being drafted right after the first couple of quarterbacks, but no longer the case. He's kind of like a consolation prize as opposed to the main starter for a lot of people. The Sports Grid Network. Diamond bets. Fernando Tatis Jr. getting popped for a PED suspension for 80 games. Now, uh, I know performance enhancing drugs are something that, you know, even here at the network, they encourage us, especially myself. They say, please, can you enhance your performance just a little bit more, Joe? <laughs> year, it's not going to happen next year for a good chunk of the season. And guess what? This is more important now that you added Juan Soto. So obviously, this news rocked Major League Baseball. Only on Sports Grid.
They are the subject of hard knocks, but they're also the subject of your fantasy football draft coming up this weekend or next. Craig Mish, along with George Kurtz, this is Fantasy Sports Today, and this is our look at the 2022 Detroit Lions. And George, before we get into the average draft position of the particular players, there is optimism for the Lions this season. And no, I don't think anybody expects Jared Goff to lead the league in passing or DeAndre Swift to lead the league in rushing or Amon Ross St. Brown to be Justin Jefferson. But that being said, we just haven't had a lot of options for the Lions through the years. They just Their running back play has been very spotty for the most part. Calvin Johnson was a star, and then he retired. Matthew Stafford was toward the end and really wasn't the quarterback he was at the beginning. Now, of course, he goes and wins the Super Bowl with the Rams. But dare I say, it's possible that three or four Lions will be rostered in fantasy football this year. Yeah, I would say certainly at least three. Uh, you can make an argument for four. Uh, so yeah, they have some players here for fantasy. All right, this is not this is not good. This is not a great team. It may not even be a good team, but it's not a bad team anymore. You know, I think they are on the rise here. I think in the future, I don't know what they're going to do at quarterback. The fact that they're not a bad team means you're not going to be able to draft a top quarterback. And unless you trade up for it, you know, you trade away other future draft picks here, which may not be the way to go. So you're probably going to have to live with golf for a bit or go with somebody on the free agent market there. That's the only thing about their future that I worry about here. Other than that, I think they have pieces in place here uh, to, to really, you know, be competitive at the very least. Right, you're certainly better than Chicago. I think you're still behind Minnesota and Green Bay, but I don't think you're a laughing stock anymore, which is really the best I can say about the team. I think this offense could even be dangerous if and when uh, Jameson Williams recovers from the ACL and he, once he is Jameson Williams again. Yeah, and that's the big question because Jameson Williams is really the thing I think that puts the Lions over the top. Uh, they really haven't had many good receivers since uh, Calvin, and, and that definitely changes with Amon Ross St. Brown and Jamison Williams. But first, let's take a look at Jared Goff, George. And there were a lot of people that halfway through the season last year with the way that Goff was playing, the prediction was in general, this will be his final year and only year as the quarterback of the Detroit Lions. But you know what? Take a look at those numbers in the last four or five weeks of the season. Yes, the Lions were out of it. They sort of were playing with caution to the wind. But my goodness, if Goff plays anything like he did in the final two months of the season, I don't know. This ADP where he's going, he's not your starter, and he's basically not even somebody that you want to draft as a backup. Is, should that uh, sentiment change going into this year, or do you think that he's being drafted about where he should, which is not being drafted at all? Yeah, in one quarterback league, you're not drafting golf. I mean, that, that's really that simple. So you're not worried about him. You're not taking him as a reserve. There's just no point to it. Uh, I, mean, I, I am someone who believes in nowadays because everyone drafts two quarterbacks in a one quarterback league that you do have to take a backup here. But I'm, Goff is probably not going to be that guy. You know, there will be a smattering of quarterbacks left, and if Goff's one of those guys, fine. I'll pick up there on the wave wire or someone just like him, and I'll get another wide receiver, another running back on my roster. Uh, I don't see massive upside here. That being said, I think he can be a serviceable quarterback, uh, NFL quarterback, uh, more than anything else. So uh, I, said, I don't think he's your quarterback of the future. I think you are going to have to upgrade eventually. I understand the uh, the problem the, uh, that Detroit's in. If you don't have a top three, top four pick, it's hard to get that quarterback unless you're willing to give up all those picks. We saw San Francisco do that for Trey Lance, right? And they got Detroit got to do mm-hmm. something similar to go up and get a quarterback next year. So I think that's going to be their conundrum. So I think everything else is sort of there. I don't think golf is poor. I don't. Do I think he's average? I think that's what you're shooting for. And I think I think he can be average, which might be good enough for this team for the uh, you know the immediate future here. So I don't have really high hopes that uh, Craig is going to you know break uh, the roof or break the ceiling here and go have a big time year. I don't see that happening here. But I think he can be someone, a game manager type, who doesn't cost them games. Yeah, and, and that's really the key. I, I know that you know Dan Campbell, their head coach, had some harsh words for him about midway through the season, just saying that Goff needed to play better, and it worked for whatever reason. Goff just started dialing it up, throwing it down the field. Part of the reason why was DeAndre Swift also became a lot more viable. And DeAndre Swift's ADP, my gosh, George, this is super high. He's an RB1 in every fantasy football league going into the season. So expectations are certainly through the roof. He was probably my favorite player coming out of the draft from Georgia a couple of years ago. But George, it's been injuries. And so just like Christian McCaffrey with the first or second or overall pick, DeAndre Swift at the end of the season, could he have 1,500 total yards? I think it's possible. He's got to stay on the field. That's the whole thing. What kind of risk do you invest in this? The most important ability, uh, really NFL, fantasy, whatever you want to call go for it, is availability. And he doesn't always have it. All right, he's missed uh, 
Look at this, uh, three and four games his first couple of seasons, but he's also been banged up in games where he's not, you know, sure he played in it, but didn't play the full game. Didn't come close to playing the full game. And that can be extremely frustrating for a player that goes in and out. I'm with you. He stays healthy and plays 17. 1,500 may be, uh, you know, the ceiling there, but he'll, he'll have a good season. All right, now he's being drafted as a top eight running back here. As you said, a running back one. And that's where I would draft him as well here. Uh, he can have that kind of season. Just stay healthy. The passing game is good enough in defense is not to have that eighth man in the box, right? You got to worry about St. Brown. I like the addition of uh, Chark. Uh, when Williams gets mm-hmm. healthy, you know, they're going to have a good passing attack. Hawkinson, I mean, good tight end. You know, so yeah. they have the passing attack to make teams respect it where you just can't load up a stop with and go, hey, Jared, go beat us because he can beat you or they will beat you with those receivers there. So I'm I'm on board the swift train here. Just play. Okay. Just play. There's nothing more frustrating. You know it and I know. There's nothing more frustrating. Oh, great. He's inactive today. Great. I got to go to my bench here and I'll replace him. There's nothing more frustrating than that for a fantasy owner. Yeah, and, and that's going to be the thing with Swift, which which tells you all you need to know about his backup in Jamal Williams, who won a you know fantasy football championships for people a few years ago when he ended up playing when Aaron Jones got hurt. And in fact, there aren't many backups like this, George, where he doesn't have the where they don't have the big name. But you can tell there's some level of distrust for Swift. If you're going top 200 in a fantasy football draft, Jamal Williams' number here in ADP is 60, is 164. So basically, he is pretty much being drafted in 12-team leagues as a handcuff. And, uh, you know, you don't want to ever root for this, but people who have Williams are clearly rooting for something to happen to Swift. And if you root for that, uh, it's probably not the right thing to do. But in the end, if you draft the backup running back for Detroit, you've been right by taking him over 600 yards last year, running back 50. He's a, a stash at this point. How about for you? You know, uh, I think uh, I think Detroit did the smart thing. I think you have to have a capable backup here because, hey, he has an, Swift has an injury history. You'd be doing your team a disservice if you didn't have a running back who was capable of playing a game here, a game there, or more than a couple of series per, per game just to give Swift a, uh, a, a break here. So I have no problem with this. When it comes to handcuffs, uh, I'm not um, – I'm not a pure believer in it, and let me explain why. Uh, years ago, I probably was a believer in it, but that's changed now that so many teams have capable number twos that mm-hmm. I don't need to take the top number two, you know, for for my team, for you know, for Swift, for, for his backup. They, they might be a better number two on another team out there. So I'll take that guy's uh, handcuff. You know, they're all going to play. There are, what, maybe three, four, five teams at most in the NFL that have one back, and that's it, one back. You know, like uh, the Panthers with McCaffrey. Other than that, Every team uses some kind of combination back. So I don't want the handcuff necessarily. I want the best back available on my list. They're all going to play. All going to play. You know, maybe I give Williams a little bit more uh, up my list once I draft Swift, just so I have both here. But I'm not just drafting a pure handcuff anymore. I want the best backup running back available when I'm ready to take that spot. And I think that that's the key to all of fantasy football is just knowing when to draft the, uh, you know, the handcuff to have them on your team potentially when you can pick a player up off the waiver wire that's sitting out there because Williams will be on some waiver wires to start the season in some 12 team leagues. Okay. Coming up next, we go from running backs to wide receivers and tight ends. And the lions have three wide receivers that are being drafted in deeper leagues. If you include Jamison Williams. So we'll talk about that. We'll also go through their tight end. And then we'll also ask ourselves the question, is there anyone that we haven't been discussing with the lions today on the show that we should be taking in all here in 2022 as a reminder if you miss any of our team previews and you're getting ready to draft your fantasy football team this weekend just go to our youtube channel or you or sportsgrid.com because we're posting and archiving these videos every single day for you going through these player by player team by team each day all the way up until the beginning of the regular season we have it for you and we'll be right back with more on the lions after this might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections 
and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full football. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die. For and God and being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San I'm gonna go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game the Phillies here. Prime over minus time. 128. We do have to lay up a little bit of wood here, Donnie, but I think against Patrick Corbin. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. Pharrell, coast to coast. Tell me why you're so high on Herbert and the Chargers. They never get it done. Number one is injuries. This team seems to be snake bit. If that goes their way this year, the only thing that's going to prevent them is coaching. The coaching and the offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, he has a strong-armed, one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league in Justin Herbert, who is young and can throw the ball all over the field. And they have one of the shortest target depths of any team in the NFL. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Donnie, in this AP Top 25, what caught your eye? Yeah, if we're looking just at, you know, the old guard, right, which particularly pertains to the S- excuse me, SEC, Alabama number one, Georgia number three, Texas number six. So three teams in the SEC in the top six. Wouldn't shock us again, Kevin, right? Two teams out of the final four will end up being from SEC competition. Notre Dame at number five. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to Fantasy Sports Today. Craig Mish along with George Kurtz. Davis has the week off. We're previewing the Detroit Lions 2022 fantasy football campaign and going through the average draft position of all of the players that you'll be taking or considering taking in your upcoming fantasy football draft. So let's take a look at the average draft position as a whole with some of the key players. We'll start off, of course, with DeAndre Swift. His ADP is 14 and a half, so he's being taken late for a second round. TJ Hawkinson has never been drafted higher. This looks like- All right, let's continue on. Sorry about that. We had a technical difficulty there. Amon Ross St. Brown is 69.2. DJ Shark comes over from free agency from the Jacksonville Jaguars. His ADP is 156. And Jamal Williams checks in, as we've discussed, at 164 for Jamal Williams. Uh, One of the key players going into the 2022 season will be Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, last year, you may remember, St. Brown was sort of an afterthought going into the season in terms of drafts. Again, a player coming from a situation in college where he was one of the lead guys at wide receiver, but really didn't show much in the first half of the year. In fact, some people would say that he was the top pickup in all of fantasy football last season as far as the waiver wire is concerned. This year, St. Brown is going into a much different year. As we mentioned, his average draft position is significantly higher. His uh, ADP right now, is 69.2 which tells you he's being drafted essentially as a wide receiver two in the sixth round in a lot of fantasy football drafts 912 receiving yards last year five touchdowns uh also also had uh basically what i would say is the 
two best weeks for a wide receiver down the stretch, and there's been a lot of comparisons to St. Brown with another great wide receiver in the NFL that played many years for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that, of course, is Heinz Ward. There's just a lot of comparisons between these two. It's not like St. Brown is going to run down the field necessarily and catch a 70-yard uh, touchdown, but he can do it, and he can catch a 40, a 50. We saw it at the end of last year. He was the main target, essentially, for Jared Goff, and he was posting DFS games of 50 and 40 points in the last couple of weeks. Uh, people refer to players as potentially league winners, and that's exactly what St. Brown was last season. He had a fantastic year. But the question is, would you consider taking him uh, based on his ADP, which is as a wide receiver two in the sixth round, or did the Lions go out and make moves this offseason to basically take some potential targets away from him basically meaning they don't trust him in full we'll certainly have to see how that plays out uh but st brown george the heinz ward comp i think is a good one he's someone that's probably not going to have 1700 yards in a fantasy football season but uh could could you know catch some huge passes for his team he's an over the middle type guy and i loved what i saw at the end of last year and i mean could he be a wide receiver one at the end of the season i think it's possible All right, we'll get back to George here in just a second. We're just having some audio issues. We'll get George's thoughts on St. Brown coming up in a little bit. Well, one of the more dynamic wide receivers, of course, in all of college football in the 2021 season was Jamison Williams out of the University of Alabama. Unfortunately, he suffered a serious injury in the, in the uh, playoff championship and uh, probably not going to play a ton at the beginning of the season. The Lions have already ruled him out for game one of their upcoming campaign. Now he is being drafted right now as the 65th overall wide receiver in fantasy football. And his average draft position is 187. So the thought process with Williams, at least for the most part going into 2022 is he's more of a keeper league selection. You'll hear that word a lot, let dynasty or keeper league selection, because we just don't know when he's going to get back on the field. And as a wide receiver, will know a lot of the damage that they're going to do, and especially with a player like Williams, who uses speed, is going to be his downfield ability. Goff has no issue throwing the deep ball. It's just a matter of Williams being back to full health. We also don't know if he's going to start the season on the physically unable to perform list. That will be something that the Lions are going to have to choose to make a decision on in the next couple of weeks. Once that happens, then uh, in a lot of your leagues, if you draft Williams, in a redraft league, you may be able to place him on what's called the IR slot. For those of you, of course, who don't know, you just basically put the player on, on that, and he's out for a period of time, and then you could bring him back. But love the idea of Williams in a dynasty league. 2022 may not be his, his year to start. He'll definitely be an interesting player to keep an eye on, uh, I would say, in the months of October and beyond in uh, fantasy football this season. Now, the reason why the Lions drafted Jamison Williams was for speed but very smartly knowing that there's a chance they may not be able to have him at the beginning of the year, they went out and they signed DJ Shark, formerly of the Jacksonville Jaguars, to a uh, contract. And Shark was an afterthought in Jacksonville. And maybe it's predominantly because of the offense that they were running last year under Urban Meyer. But Shark basically was in and out of injuries. He had some hand issues and he only caught 154 receiving yards and two touchdowns. But as you can see, he's creeping into the fourth and fifth round in a lot of fantasy football drafts, excuse me, uh, 14th and 15th round in fantasy football drafts, because many people think that he will be a starter alongside St. Brown for the beginning of the season when Jamison Williams is not in there. Now, if you take a look at Sharks numbers previously, that was a guy, George, who could potentially get a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. Um, I think Jamison Williams, once he's on the field, is going to really hurt Shark's production, but you may be able to draft Shark as your wide receiver three, play him for the first couple of weeks, and then when Williams comes back, you probably have to have another option. That, that assumes that you know, Williams, when he comes back, is ready to play right away, play a full-time role right away. I think we're all assuming with all these guys, Michael Gallup, Chris Godwin, Jameson Williams, they're all going to come back and be, hey, the same guy they were before the ACL. Generally, it doesn't work out that way. I mean, it, ta it takes some time. Even when you're recovered from the injury, you got to get over the mental aspect of it. You got to be, do you have the same quickness? Do you have the same cutability? That sort of thing. I think, right. you know, I think Williams is a fantastic receiver. Fantastic. I think he would have gone top 
five in the draft if he doesn't tear the ACL in the uh, Sugar Bowl, I believe it was. So, uh, but I think to think these guys are going to come back and be that player right away. We've heard this over the years with ACL injuries. Generally, it's your second year. Your second year where you recover from the injury and you're that player again. And I've had that surgery. There's something to that. We you get all the mental hurdles, all the physical hurdles here. I think all these guys will play this year. Odell Beckham as well. But I don't know if we're going to see the true player they are. Maybe of the four guys, one hits the ground running. You know, once again, Beckham, Gallup, Godwin, Williams. Maybe one guy hits the ground running. The others going to take. Uh, they're not going to be that guy. We're going to be a little disappointed. Some guys recovery takes longer than others. Michael Gallup seems like he's going to take a little longer than Godwin, for instance. So, what I, and I think Detroit will be smart about this. And make sure that Williams is 100% before they, you know, give him, hey, it's your, it's your team here. Go out and go. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. And naturally, Shark uh, showed a lot more ability when Urban Meyer was not the coach as opposed to when he was. So maybe that is a part of it as well. All right. Let's close it out with our discussion of the tight end position. And just to show you how thin tight end is, TJ Hawkinson with uh, these numbers 583 and four touchdowns last year is the seventh overall tight end being drafted essentially in the sixth round of fantasy football drafts now once again Hawkins had any injury issues again last year George I don't believe the, I don't know if it was a concussion last year I, I don't recall what the injury was with him last year but he did miss time again uh what people are doing basically is extrapolating his season George for a season where he plays in 15 may, maybe 15 games out of the 17 giving him somewhere between 800 receiving yards and eight touchdowns, which is basically where a lot of the tight ends are slotting in at spots six, seven, and eight. Yeah, I think it was a thumb injury for Hawkinson last year, if I remember correctly. I think the, the concussion might have been the year before. But either way, he's had injuries, all right? That's his biggest problem here. Now, he's not going to be the the top tier, all right? Your Andrews, Kelsey, uh, Pitts, uh, probably about Waller and Kittle in that tier as well. He's going to be with Dalton Schultz, all right? Dalton Schultz, Hawkinson, Goddard. Might put Zach Ertz in this tier as well. He was really good when he came over to Arizona last year. He's in that tier. Uh, but still, he's a good, solid tight end. If you don't want to spend a second, third round pick on the guys I just mentioned, the top tier, well, you're waiting to round six, round seven, maybe the end of round five, depending on how your drip is going for. Hawkinson, Schultz, Goddard, Ertz. It's really what you're going for here, depending on if you want to pay for, for a tight end. So I like Hawkinson to stay on the field. I mentioned this team has the weapons in place. Got the running back in Swift, assuming he can play, uh, stay healthy. You know, you got the wide receivers. Goff is at least a serviceable quarterback. He can get the ball to Hawkinson. So I'm a Hawkinson guy. I'm a big believer here. And if I can get him in round, if I can get him in round seven, I'm thrilled. If I, get him, if, I have to, if I have to take him round five, not as much. Round six, all right, you split the difference here, and you're a happy guy. But I think Hawkinson will put up solid numbers for you. Yep, I think so, too. A good pick there. All right, uh, George, before we close it out, any names on Detroit that we have not talked about that fall maybe outside the top 200 that in a best ball draft maybe should be paying more attention to in a regular season draft? Yeah, I mean – you could say Justin Jackson, the running back. I mean, I've had him in a couple of leagues over the years uh, with the, when he was at the Chargers. He's mm-hmm. someone, Josh Reynolds. Uh, once again, if Williams isn't ready to play, let's say Williams could take a little longer than we think. I think Josh Reynolds could be somebody we look at. Okay. Well, those are some names there. And don't forget, folks, you can catch all of our previews each and every day right here on Fantasy Sports Today. We'll have another one for you tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern. So hope you will join us then. Uh, All of our previews are available for you and archived over on our website, sportsgrid.com, and also on our YouTube channel. So make sure that you catch those. And if you have any questions for us, let us know. And definitely hit us up with some of the fantasy football questions going into your fantasy football draft this season. But George and I have to take a break. But coming up next, it's time for us to do a little fantasy or reality. We'll ask some very important fantasy football questions. And for those of you who are fans of pizza... You'll want to stay tuned because there's a new kind of pizza on the verge of coming out. And George and I will discuss that next. So stay on the grid. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. 
play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. sports the today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game practice. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like so everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it for one. In half. game, oh, live, man. prime oh, time. The Baker, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Diamond bets. Fernando Tatis Jr getting popped for a PED suspension for 80 games. Now, uh, I know performance-enhancing drugs are something that, you know, even here at the network, they encourage us, especially myself. They say, please, can you enhance your performance just a little bit more, Joe? <laughs> year, it's not going to happen next year for a good chunk of the season. And guess what? This is more important now that you added Juan Soto. So, obviously, this news rocked Major League Baseball. Only on Sports Grid. Pharrell, coast to coast. The PEDs intentionally and people are still going to watch baseball the rest of the year and in the playoffs and the world series and then next year when everyone's kissing his ass all of us won't kiss his ass because we know he's a user the guy took peds that's how he got all of his big fancy numbers and that's how he got that big fat guaranteed 14 year 340 million dollars the sports grid network the morning after. Well, the Niners have a better overall year than those two other teams being the Jags and the Jets. You know, it's funny. Is I think you'd get a lot of people, though you, you make a good point about where the number would sit. I think you'd get a lot of people to bet the Niners. I'm high on the Niners. I still would take the combination. I'm low on the Jets. I know I'm probably walking into a real bad trap here, and I'm going to live with it. I am very optimistic about the Jacksonville Jets. The Sports Grid Network. Welcome back, Fantasy Sports Today. I'm George Kurtz. He's Craig Mish. And uh, you can follow us on our social media here where you can get all of our opinions pretty much on anything. We have Sports Grid TV and at Sports Grid on Twitter. You can follow me at George Kurtz. I'm not all that hard to find. No cute little nicknames here. And I think Craig is uh, also at Craig Mish. So uh, that's where we are here as we uh, get ready for fantasy or reality here in uh, this segment here. Uh, I'm a Yankee fan, by the way, and I won the last night. Yankees finally, big win here. So uh, I guess for pretty much my fantasy uh, last night, they have a little rain delay here, and we get back, and all of a sudden, yeah, Yankees score runs again. Three home runs. Josh Downs at the bringer of rain with a big grand slam. Uh, I know I was on with Scott Wetzel on In-Game Live last night. We are talking about maybe you ought to bet the Rays here because the Rays are very good at getting uh, that, that ghost runner home. The Yankees had gone seven straight extra innings seven straight extra innings without scoring a run how is that possible with a ghost runner but we also that nightmare in uh, seattle last week where they were having the yankees were having runners thrown out on the bases in three consecutive extra innings uh yes i did not handle that all that well here at 1 a.m in the morning on the east coast how yeah doing? i bet you did yeah josh donaldson no, definitely making you happy last night but a lot of upset people watching that game too if you bet that one a story for another day let's do some fantasy or reality It's a fun exercise, George, in fantasy football to take a look back at the first and second overall picks in fantasy football the last decade. You'll find some 
really fascinating names. Uh, one of them, by the way, uh, crazily enough, it's when I bring it up, people don't even believe it. George David Johnson. Remember him? <laughs> Remember yeah. David Johnson? First overall running back taken, played one game, missed the entire year. Another player that was taken first or second overall just two years ago was Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. Well, it looks like Thomas is finally back and he's going to be on the field this year. Jameis Winston hypothetically looks like his quarterback to start the season. New offense, uh, new attitude it looks like for Thomas. He looks like he's ready to go. Fantasy or reality, George. Michael Thomas will be a top 12 fantasy football wide receiver this season. Oh, this is uh, – I have my doubts here. Uh, he hasn't played football in a couple of years. I don't think he wanted to play last year, by the way. That was a strange situation, right? Not having surgery. Doesn't tell the team he needs it till September, right? When the season started here. I think him and Sean Payton, I think, yeah, they had a thing. I know Payton had thrown him out of practice a couple of times because of different things here. I don't think he wanted to play with Payton anymore. I think that was what was going on there. So he's surgery. Then he's not able to come back during the season. I can tell you in my home league, it's a keeper league. Whenever you, wherever you draft somebody, you lose that round. I would have been able to keep Thomas in round seven this year. Now it's a super flex league, uh, league for that, whatever it's worth here. So that round seven gets a little, uh, little uh, drowned out a little bit here. I had Thomas in round seven or Higgins in round six. Those are pretty much what I came down to. I chose Higgins, not Thomas. For a couple of reasons here. No Drew Brees. All right, he's gone. Now you got right. James uh, Winston. And I think uh, last year they really reined in Winston, right? You pretty much you didn't throw the ball at all. They're going to win with that defense. All right, Kamara's not the same Kamara he used to be. I'm not worried about the uh, suspension. I think it's more of a next year problem, not a this year problem. But he's still mm. not the same uh, back he used to be. That offensive line isn't as good as it used to be. You know, so it's not bad, but it's not as good as it used to be. So him being a top 12 wide receiver, no, it's a fantasy for me. Too many good wide receivers. Right now, I think he's being drafted as pretty much a wide receiver three. I can see him getting into two, Craig. I can see him becoming a wide receiver two. And maybe I made the mistake in not keeping him in seventh and keeping Higgins here. But a wide receiver one, no, I'm not seeing that. Yeah, I, I think that if we would have played this game and said top 20, I, I think I would have said reality here, George, because I do think that in terms of talent, He's among them, you know, the, the best ones in the NFL to me. But there's just so many questions going into the season. And and again, predominantly for me, and Davis and I have this battle back and forth, George, but uh, like I, I just am out on Jameis Winston. Like I, I just, I, sim I don't care what his record is last year. I don't care how he started off last year. Uh, I just don't see him as a long-term quarterback for any team in the NFL. And then what's going to happen here uh, with uh, with him? Like, will Thomas get upset? Will he not want to play? He doesn't have Sean Payton there anymore. So there's just simply no way. I got fantasy here. Top 12? No. Top 20? Yeah, I mean, I could see that happening. I could see him falling in the 18, 19, 20 range. Wide receiver two, as you mentioned. But no, not, not for me at the start of the year. By the way, the other thing that I would say about Michael Thomas, a rare player, George, that I would say, let's see how the Saints are in the first half of the season. What if they're two and six? Does Michael Thomas get traded to go somewhere else? I think that's a possibility. So I have fantasy being a top 12 in the NFL. All right, let's move on to quarterback one in fantasy football. Naturally, you have a lot of opportunities and a lot of choices. Maybe some people think Patrick Mahomes is a top quarterback in fantasy this year. Others will think maybe it is Josh Allen or maybe even going a step further like Kyler Murray or somebody else. Fantasy or reality, George? Let's talk about Allen in Buffalo. Uh, Josh Allen will finish quarterback one in fantasy football for the third straight season. Now, I believe in all the drafts I've done, uh, and I'm, maybe there's one that is not, but I believe Josh Allen has been the first quarterback taken in every draft I've done. You know, actually, there could be one out there, an outlier where it was somebody else. Uh, maybe Pat Mahomes snuck in there. But Allen's always the guy that seems to be going number one overall. And I agree with that. If I was going to take a quarterback early, you know, it's, it's once again, a super flex league or a two-quarterback league, it would be Josh Allen. But that's not the question. Will he finish as the number one quarterback for a third straight year? Number one fantasy quarterback for a third straight year. Uh, if I was gambling, I would take the field here, just because that's just what I always do. I don't think it's clear cut here. Uh, that being said, that's not what this question asks here. Do I think he's going to be the quarterback, the number one quarterback? Probably. You mentioned Mahomes. I don't think it'll be Mahomes because you lose Tyree Kill, that's a loss. That's just a loss to me. The guy I could see that uh, could sneak in there, once again, we always have to assume health here, will be Lamar Jackson. Betting on himself, mm -hmm. the team is healthy again. I think he's going to rush for you know a gazillion yards. He'll throw enough touchdowns to be uh, in there. I think there's a guy that I think could beat him. It would be Lamar. You know that being said, 
Do I think do I think it's gonna be Josh Allen? Absolutely. I think uh, Lamar Jackson would be probably the third quarterback I would take overall in fantasy, right behind Bob Pat Mahomes. And if anybody wants to take Lamar Jackson second over Mahomes, not arguing it. Like I said, I think I think Mahomes will come down a little bit here. Tougher schedule there. Plus those uh, you know losing Tyree Kill, whatever you think of the man, has to hurt. Just has to hurt. I don't think MVS and uh, Juju Smith-Schuster are going to cover that at all. So I'm going to say, for the purpose of this question and not a gambling question, this is reality. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm like you, George. Though normally I like you taking the field. That's what I'm going to do here. You give me one guy against everybody else. I'm going to take everybody else. So I'll say fantasy here. I'll say that somebody else sneaks in and and gets the number one spot. I like your your thought process there with Lamar Jackson. I got to tell you, I like it a lot more if I know that he's not signed going into the year because then you know what Lamar Jackson has on his mind going into the uh, upcoming season that he's got to make or break because I, I think he's a free agent in two years. So I have fantasy. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go with the field as opposed to Josh Allen, George. And for this one, I'll go against you. Nothing against Allen, but we're just answering the question. Fantasy reality. That's the way that I'm going to go. Okay, well, yesterday a funny story came out basically that Papa John's wants to make pizza fun again make like stir up the pot make pizza interesting again didn't realize that that needed to happen but here we are now naturally all of these pizza companies like domino's like pizza hut uh, like papa john's they've taken a hit through the years a lot of people have kind of dialed it back george they want that mom and pop place around the corner and they have their favorite pizza place maybe that's never changed it feels like it is more a thing now than it was in the past and so what papa john's has decided to do is this innovative idea of to have pizza bowls and the pizza bowls do not have pizza these are like the toppings on the pizza and the cheese on the top of the pizza so not actual pizza in the pizza bowls this is going to make pizza fun again fantasy reality george the new pizza bowl from papa john's will be a big hit i don't think i've ever been to papa john's uh i know i've never been in one maybe someone bought it to a house and we had some but uh what you said is so true here. I would never go to a Papa John's, a Domino's, Pizza Hut, or anything like that because that's not, that's not good pizza. You go to your mom and pop place or whatever you know, whatever your favorite pizza joint is. I can tell you I've moved uh, probably six, seven times in my life. And the first thing I – and this is so true. The first thing I always worry about, I'm not worried about where the supermarket is. I don't know where Home Depot is, where the bank is. No. Where's the pizza place? Yeah. Where's my favorite pizza place? It's the most – it's by far – it's the most important thing to me. Listen, I'm a New Yorker. We're a pizza snob as it is, right? We have the, the best pizza here. on the planet. That's the difference here for you. Now, George, for everybody else around the country, not and maybe Chicago style pizza is different, but for most people, George, they don't have that pleasure. Like around, like they they are they're watching this right now, George, and they're going, "Why? Why is George Kurt so mad? I'm ordering from Papa John's all the time. I'm ordering from Little Caesars all the time because they don't have that luxury." So just you know, think of that in this thought process here. It's true. Listen, in a mile radius from where I am right now, there's at least a half dozen pizza places. At least a half dozen, probably more. And I said, no, I got my favorite, uh, Bella Roma here. And I'm a pizza guy, all right? That's a food group for me. I love pizza. Uh, and I got the only wife on the planet, by the way, who doesn't like pizza. You know, she'll say she, it's okay, but she never, never has a slice when we get a pie here. All right. Uh, I, I, I like my pizza, right? And I need that my pizza place. So this Papa John's thing, do I think it's going to be a hit? Certainly not here. It won't be a hit here in New York. It's not going because people are going to feel the same as I do, especially right. as you get closer to the city, Queens and uh, and Brooklyn. Are you kidding me? And the city itself here? No, it won't be. It won't be a hit. Like I said, this to me is uh, when you're desperate. You know, I don't know what time Papa John's is open to, but Domino's is open late, so I can understand. You know, you get the munchies at midnight. Okay, you're going to Domino's. My local pizza place is closed by then, but I always feel like an idiot when I go to one of these things. So I get a frozen pizza. What am I doing? You know, what am I? I get much better pizza from the you know at the mom and pop store here. So for me, this is a no. I understand what you, where you're coming from. You know, hey, in other places, you don't have right. my choices here. Like I said, we have choices up the wazoo here. So for me, this is a fantasy. Yeah, it, it it's a fantasy for me as well, and I, I just don't understand the concept, like. I mean, if you want pizza, you're going to order pizza from Papa John's. And so is there a chance that some people will try this? I mean, I suppose so, but it does seem like a fleeting attempt to get some attention for people like us. And they have done the job and we are talking about it. So naturally, maybe somebody out there will watch it. But I don't think this has quite the phenomenon of the Popeye's chicken sandwich 
which a couple of years ago was just out of this world and everybody wanted to try it and people are online. People still, by the way, are online at, at the Popeyes near me. I drive by and I see people there all the time. Uh, but yes, I, I, I'm with you, George. Fantasy, I don't think this will be a big hit. I think that you're a little jaded living where you are. Most people around the country, that when their pizza choices come up, George, it is Papa John's and Pizza Hut and Domino's and Little Caesars and probably somewhere else. But for you, that's not the case. For the rest of us, it pretty much is. But I'm like you. I one of my favorite pizza places here in South Florida as well. We have, some, I think, some good pizza here too. Okay, we got to take a quick time out here on the show. Coming up next, it's time for the Sports Grid 60. One note to tell you before we leave today is I think when we're on the air today at 2 o'clock Eastern, we're going to get the full suspension news on Deshaun Watson. There are a couple of different media outlets reporting that that decision is coming today. So naturally, that's going to be our top story if that indeed uh, does happen. So make sure you are tuned into Newswire this afternoon at 2 o'clock as we'll have the latest as to uh, what Watson's situation will be. The saga finally coming to an end here with the NFL season upon us, no doubt. Uh, Sports Grid 60 is next. Kevin and Donnie coming up with the early line, noon to 2. I'm back with Newswire. I'll also be appearing on Scott Farrell's show later today, I believe, as well, barring some crazy uh, breaking news as well. So make sure you stay on the news for that as we wrap it up next. Don't go away. The early line. Can Cease become the favorite in this market by the result of this baseball game? I don't think so, because we have to remind ourselves. This isn't, you know, Dylan Cease pitching to Justin Verlander, and that's the head-to-head matchup of who wins it gets the title belts, right? I mean, that's not, that's not the way it works here. You actually are taking a look at this game saying, how is Verlander going to do up against that Chicago White Sox lineup? How is Cease going to do against that Astros lineup? Only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. Pre-game, pre-game. Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real-time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds. All the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions. Only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion. 2017 world number one me personally i keep my game face on me all the time especially coming out of the bunker leaving the range or even leaving the course what's your story pharrell coast to coast tell me why you're so high on herbert and the Chargers. They never get it done. Number one is injuries. This team seems to be snake bit. If that goes their way this year, the only thing that's going to prevent them is coaching. The coaching and the offensive coordinator, Joe Lombardi, he has a strong armed, one of the most talented quarterbacks in the league in Justin Herbert, who is young and can throw the ball all over the field. And they have one of the shortest target depths of any team in the NFL. The Sports Grid Network.
All right, George, before uh, we end the show, we anticipated some news on Deshaun Watson today, and it looks like we will get it. Pro Football Talk is reporting that there is a settlement in the Deshaun Watson case in the NFL, and uh, they are reporting, again, that uh, that Deshaun Watson will get an 11-game suspension. They've agreed to this, and a $5 million fine for the upcoming NFL season. So let's first do the fantasy take from this and then the reality one from you before we wrap. We've got two minutes. Well, fantasy take becomes more interesting now, right? Because he's going to return this season. I don't see how you can draft him in a one-year league. What are you hoping for? He comes back in uh, week 12, week 13, and he's going to lead you to a championship? I mean, if you made it that far and you're in the playoffs, also your quarterback is better anyway. Uh, right. So, I'm, And I just don't see this happening. He hasn't played football in a couple of years, Craig. So I don't, I'm not seeing that. In a dynasty or a keeper league, this is where it becomes more interesting. You might be able to get a value out of him. If you think it's going to be, you know, he's going to play five, six games this year, and next year be back to Deshaun Watson, then maybe you get some value as your quarterback keeper for the next, you know, whatever your keeper league rules are. Same thing with the dynasty league. You will get some rebate here. Yeah, and the other thing, too, is I, I think, George, from my perspective, this pretty much eliminates the Browns from any sort of good season, doesn't it? Like, what what, what would be their best-case scenario was four and seven. I mean, do you see anything better than that? The Browns have a good team. I mean, if Brissett could just be, I guess, serviceable. I mean, I can see five and six, maybe six and five if everything goes it's their going, way, but it's uh, tough. Uh, it's tough. That's They play in a rough division here. I'm probably with you, four and seven. This season's probably shot, but the Browns knew that anyway. They knew that when yeah. they signed in this season was probably going to be done. They're not playing for this year. They're playing for the rest of the contract. Yeah, for sure. All right, much more on this coming up, 2 o'clock Eastern on Newswire. So, Make sure you tune in as we'll discuss this at length. Hopefully we'll get some updated odds, by the way, on some of the sports books that we can go through how the numbers have changed. That'll do it for the show today. Thanks, of course, to our friends at LTN. And for my producer, Brett Levy, my co-host today, George Kurtz, I'm Craig Mish. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. If you're watching here on Sports Grid, enjoy. If not, see you back here tomorrow, 11 o'clock Eastern, for another edition of Fantasy Sports Today. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah. Great, great.